Now, as you're aware, solar in the summer is great, but solar in the winter and the dark months isn't so great. So I'm going to tell you in this video how to get the best generation export rate for the solar you still generate. And if you're not exporting anything, how to get the best price per kilowatt hour for your energy that you still have to import. Now, I've completely changed the way my solar array works in October 2023 for the winter months, but I'm gonna be carrying this over to the summer because it means the best import price, but also the best export price, which means my solar payback will be a lot faster than it would have been before I made this change. Now, if you've not been following my solar journey on evnick.com forward slash solar, I'm just gonna quickly tell you what system I've got so you know if you can follow this guide, but you should be able to as long as you've got battery storage. Even if you haven't got solar, you should be able to benefit slightly from doing what I'm gonna tell you to do today. And that is, I have 10 bifacial panels linked to a microinverter, which means I generate a little bit more in darker days like the winter. But I also have a 10 kilowatt hour storage capacity in my Alpha ESS battery storage. This system was fitted by Heatable. If you've not got solar, you're thinking of getting solar, maybe check out evnick.com forward slash Heatable. They give you an online fixed price and that price can do batteries or no batteries and they have a selection of batteries, including the Alpha ESS that I've got, Tesla power walls and give energy. Now they're not all displayed on the website, but if you get a basic uh, fixed price off them and you want to change the battery, when you speak to their customer service, you can ask them for requotes on the Tesla battery give energy system, whichever system you might want. But my system is the Alpha ESS Smile Free with 10 microinverter bifacial solar panels. So how have I maximized my solar? Now, before you think I've been on the roof cleaning and scrubbing my panels or coating them in some special reflective or absorbent material, I haven't, I've not been on the roof at all. However, I have considered taking the panels off and painting the backside of my roof white to make it more reflective to see if that makes an effect on the bifacial panels. I'd love to know in the comments below if you think that would improve the efficiency of these bifacial panels, which work by having solar reflectors on the back as well as the front. But I haven't done any of that. What I've done is change the way I use my battery and think of my solar energy. Now in the past, I've been made to believe that using all your solar energy is absolutely the thing you should do with solar energy. You don't want to export any of it, you want to use all of it. And there's EV chargers that have been designed specifically for that need. They pick up how much solar energy you're generating and divert that into the car. Now that is a great idea if you're into greenwashing, but let's forget about the greenwashing. That is not the best thing normally for the national grid, but also it's not the best thing to get you the best returns on your solar payback. So what can you do to completely radically change the way the grid works and your battery works to be more in harmony rather than just thinking that you're doing the best thing by putting it into your car? Now, currently, this particular idea that I've got will only work if you're an electric car owner on the Octopus Intelligent tariff. To be on Octopus Intelligent, you even need a compatible car or a compatible charger. There is more chargers and cars that are compatible with Octopus Intelligent nearly every single week. So make sure that you check out evnick.com forward slash energy. You can sign up to Octopus Energy there. You get a hundred pound to split with me. And that means that you can sign up to one of these Octopus Intelligent tariffs. There is Octopus Go, but it will not offer the same deal that we're gonna be talking about here because on Intelligent, the reason why it works so much better for this idea that I'm doing is the peak energy is 30p. We wanna avoid peak, 30p, bad. The off-peak energy is 7.5p a kilowatt hour. Now that's the energy we wanna use. That's usually always between half 11 and half five in the morning. So it's six hours of cheap 7.5p electricity off-peak. Now, the way Intelligent works is if you plug your car in, you could get more than six hours, a lot more than six hours. So if you plug the car in and the grid is green, the car will charge outside sometimes those six hours. Now this can cause complications with the battery system, which we will get back to with some solutions later on into this video. Now as an Octopus Intelligent customer, you have two options on how to use your energy. Now, 
I said that this de deal that I'm talking about here is really only for Octopus Intelligent customers. It could also benefit you if you're an Octopus Agile customer for Octopus Agile import and export. But for this purpose of my video, because I'm on Intelligent, I can tell you what I've done for Intelligent. Now, on Intelligent, you have two exports. You have the outgoing Octopus export, which is about 15p a kilowatt hour at the time I've recorded this video, or you can sign up to Octopus Agile Export, which is variable depending on what time of the day it is. So depending on what you're going to do and how smart your battery system is, you could either pick Intelligent outgoing for 15p, or if you've got a really intelligent battery system, I'd probably pick Agile outgoing because that could make your returns for solar even better. Now on the 15p export, that means that why would I want to exp why do I want to import some energy from my solar panel? So self-generate, generating my own power. Why would I want to use that power when I can export it for 15p and import it at 7.5p? How can we maximize that 7.5p profit on our energy from our solar panels with our battery system? So quite simply, I charge my battery to 100% every single night, regardless of what charge it's on. If it's on a low state of charge or a high state of charge, the battery goes to 100%. So the bigger questions you're gonna be asking, what was your actual bill, Nick, in October, which we'll get to in a minute, but also the most important question, what happens if you plug your car in during Intelligent and the battery decides to start discharging into the car? What are the solutions for fixing that and getting around it? So you've come home at 6 p.m. and you've plugged your car in. An octopus has decided to schedule a charge from 6 till 11 p.m. That means that you're typically your house battery will be discharged into your car. So how do you stop it? Well, there's a few solutions depending on your circumstances. Now, everyone will be different. Now, first of all, I can't do this solution for myself, but you might be able to. Now, you'll have one of these for your battery and your EV charger typically. Now this is called a CT clamp, a current transformer clamp. And all this does is it me measures the current that's passing through it. Now if your battery and EV charger are on separate uh, consumer units and separate uh, supplies, what you should be able to do is take this CT clamp off from seeing the whole house. So this is the one that goes into your uh, battery, not your EV charger, this is your battery CT clamp. Take it off and move it so it doesn't see your EV charger. In other words, it can only see your house load and its self battery, its own battery. It can't see your EV charger. Now, depending on how your EV charger and your house and your battery has been wired, this might not be possible. So we have some other solutions for you. So one of the other options is using something like Home Assistant. Now, if you don't know what Home Assistant is, it's Fairly easy, but also fairly complicated once you get into it. Now I have a home assistant system here. It's basically a Raspberry Pi or an old computer that you've got that you've put some home automation software on. Think of it as a smart Alexa, but built into your own home that you control and you can connect different apps to it like your EV charger, Octopus Intelligent, if you've got a home mini like I've got, or an inverter, you can connect all these things to it. And what you could do is if you've got um, certain brands of charger or APIs in your home mini, the home mini sends a signal by the API to say where extra intelligent hours have been scheduled. Now it doesn't work for me on the Omi charger at the moment, but I'm sure that will be coming soon. But if you've got an API card, it will trigger a thing on the intelligent home assistant app to say that there's an extra intelligent hour. You can recognize that in home assistant and tell it to change the schedule of your battery inverter. Now this is possible with the alpha, there's, there's some commands that you can set to change the charging hours and you could schedule extra charging hours in those uh, cheap rate hours if you wish, or you could just get it to go on pause. Completely up to you which way you do it. However, if you can't do this because you've got a charger that's like mine that doesn't trigger that uh, intelligent trigger on the API, or you haven't got home assistant, or you haven't got a basically a charger that has an app for home assistant what are your options that are left so we'll get to that at the end of the video but let's have a quick look at the stats for october for what my solar generated which was 140 kilowatt hours of solar generation for the month of october and you know that's pretty good for an october the export back to the grid because i was maximizing the battery charging i managed to export 50 
kilowatt hours of energy. I managed to charge the battery with 236 kilowatt hours of energy and the battery discharged 207 kilowatt hours of energy. From the national grid, I imported 466 kilowatt hours of energy. Now, may I bear in mind, I have an EV charger, I charge a car there, and that means that the import was slightly higher, but also I was charging the battery with some of this energy. So 466 kilowatt hours from the grid. Um, now, the home, the home and the car used 527 kilowatt hours. So 466 from the grid, 527 is the physical house use so that's excluding charging the battery that's just charging the car and generally you know having electric showers and etc in my house running this lighting system for example now the bill for october after being paid for export was 55 pound and two pence and that's including my standing charge so for 527 kilowatt hours of energy my total bill was 50 five pound and two pence with the standing charge. Now, as I couldn't move my CT clamp and I couldn't get a home assistant to work properly with Intelligent, what was my solution? Well, annoyingly, my solution is the simplest solution for anyone to do, which is every time I plug my car in with Omi, they send me a push notification with the hours the car's gonna charge at. So I manually change the battery to charge at those hours. Now, I have made a slight home automation for that so i can just press one button in home assistant that automatically sets the battery just to charge and then i press that button again to turn it back to normal now what you can do is you could just schedule those hours manually in between but i tend to be awake for when laura gets home from work and plugs the car in so i just schedule it by hitting a button manually it's a real faff now i've done a video here about octopus intelligent and how i think that some problems are caused by it including this battery issue but if you're interested in getting solar panels i've done a video here of my system being installed